Hey tea heads, this is Don and Celine from Mayleaf. Welcome to the Mayleaf sessions. These are our live tea sessions and it's all about gathering tea heads from across the globe to come together, pull leaves and talk tea. We've just finished this Mayleaf session. For some reason, YouTube decided to slice off the first five minutes of our session. So we're recording this but we're going to bring you back to the live session when I'm just about to try some American tea. Charleston breakfast or the green tea? What do you reckon? Let us know. I'm going to open them both up and we'll see. Yeah, Mishkin is sleeping in the background. <laughs> yeah. That was not staged. That's one of his favorite places to be. So he's just going to sit there while we drink tea. That's pretty standard for him. Green first, breakfast, green, 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 breakfast, green, green. Okay, you know what? There's, green. Enough, there's enough greens out there that I think we're gonna go for green. So I don't know what to expect. Um, I'm gonna make an assumption just from, <laughs> no. just from the sound what that is it's that? not full leaf tea and that it's a uh, broken leaf. That's my assumption. Ooh. Is water ready? Yes, it is. Oh, do you want it at uh, what temperature? Uh, let's do 85. Now, so I've been looking at the instructions on here and they're recommending me brewing uh, one teaspoon in boiling water for green tea for two to three minutes, which as all of you know out there is really not the way that I brew. But I figure you should stay true. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a larger mug here and I'm gonna brew it their style and I'm going to brew it Gong Fu style just to be fair. I already know which one's going to taste better. Okay, do you want to focus on this? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So this is the green tea from Charleston. Okay, mm -hmm. focus back. Um, for those of you wondering where my mobile phone is, it's here and why I'm not focusing. For some reason I can't do it when I'm live. So you'll be happy to hear that I'm not going to be fiddling around on my phone. So let's take a look at these leaves. Um, so clearly it is uh, machine picked and machine um, processed is my guess. It doesn't look that green. Uh, let's do another focus. Can you do another focus? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm getting sucked into the live stream. I mean the chat. So it doesn't look that green. So it looks like it's been oxidized slightly. Um, and um, the smell is kind of it's gone up my nostril now, but <laughs> <laughs> the smell, it smells a little bit astringent, a little bit soapy um, and slightly kind of um, dried grass, dried hay. It's got some stems in it too. So clearly, you know, let's start right off the bat. This is not the kind of tea that I'm used to drinking. We're used to drinking the kind of um, Chinese, Taiwanese and Japanese high echelon green teas. So this is going to be something different, but you know, let's give it a go. I mean, it smells quite nice, quite like fresh, grassy, <laughs> fresh and Pass grassy. Pass me the kettle. Oh, 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 sorry. Do you want to just rinse the... It's fine, I'll do it. I'm just, just, it's just... just very hot. It's very oh, okay. Hot. Let's take it down. So for those of you who might want to have questions, please do ask them um, and we'll try and pick them up. We've got loads of things coming up on Mayleaf, um, the channel and also in the shop. Um, there's so many things in the pipeline. I can't talk too much about everything, but um, feel free to ask any questions. So I'm going to heat up this guy one. Um, this kettle is a Bonavita kettle and we're going to be doing a review about this. So we're using this. We're going to do a review video soon. I need the kettle still. Oh, Just leave so it there. Um, do you want to have a question? Yeah, go for a question. Uh, what are the best tea bag companies that you know? <laughs> the best tea bag companies that I know. I think that that's best left at no comment. I mean, <laughs> I don't really. I, I to be fair, I haven't explored all the tea, different tea bag companies, and I really encourage everybody to to go loose leaf because you'll always get a better a better quality product. This tea here is clearly um, an in betweener. I'm going to guess that this company makes tea bags with this tea as well, um, but this is their loose leaf version. Maybe their tea bag version, they, um, they uh, grind the leaf up a little bit more than uh, this, but 
I'm guessing that it's something similar. So what they say here is two to three minutes. So I'm gonna... Two to three minutes? Yeah, and they say boiling water. So I'm not gonna do boiling water. Ah. I'm gonna do um, mm -hmm. 85 degree water. We'll leave that there for a couple of minutes. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, quick questions about the Kung Fu Guru. Uh, when is it back in stock? And Kung Fu raw, peach, <laughs> raw Peach Orchid. Okay, Raw Peach Orchid should be back in stock next week. Hmm. So Raw Peach Orchid is back. We've received the shipment. Um, so it should be back in stock next week. Uh, Gong Fu Guru. What we're going to be doing with the Gong Fu Guru is we have about, I would say about 20 Gong Fu Gurus left. Um, and they will be back in stock next week. But those Gong Fu Gurus are going to be um, our B stock. So what we've got is we've got about 20 which have some slight blemishes on them. So the, the edging may be slightly chipped or the, the, um, the, uh, there might be a little bit of extra glue in the joint. So we're going to be selling them at a discounted rate. And after that, all of the Gong Fu Gurus are then going to be gone. And then we will have Gong Fu Guru Mark II. And that's going to be coming, but probably not for another, I would like to say a month and a half, but I'm look, it's probably looking more like two months. We tried to get the right uh, crossover so that it would arrive before the um, other Gong Fu Gurus um, sold out, but we didn't quite make it. So there's going to be a couple of months delay, I'm afraid there. Any other questions? Oh, hey, Kate. Sorry. Is it Kate? <laughs> Um, yeah, we did see each other uh, very recently. That's cool. Chester, Ilka, Fred Federico, Tomasz, Jürgen, all names that we know, that mm -hmm. we uh, remember. Okay, so that has been now two minutes. So we're going to taste it Western style first or, okay. or um, as by this company. So this company is Charleston Tea Plantation, but they're a subsidiary of Bigelow Tea, and Bigelow Tea is a much bigger tea company. So they're a subsidiary, um, and this tea is grown on um, an island called Wat Malau Island in South Carolina, in Charleston. Um, and you know, it's great, new territories making tea, I love that, it's a great thing. You know, it doesn't have to all be the old land, obviously. The old terroir is amazing, but New World Tea, and I've done a video about New World Tea, is something that we should be celebrating and pushing forward. But we need to try to convince all of these suppliers and all of these producers to really make the best possible stuff they can and try and avoid the commodity tea route. All right, should uh, we taste this tea? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's taste this tea. Sure. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Slightly sweet, it's got a little bit of an aniseed kind of t note to it, right? Oh, it's yeah. also got some creaminess to it. It's a, it does have a slight milky note to it as well. So it looks like there are some uh, lactones that have been preserved mm. in this tea, mm. which is nice. Mm. It's not bitter. Not bitter. It's quite light actually, considering the color, how strong it is. You know what? You know, it's not a tea that I would be going to. It's not a tea that we would purchase, but it's not a bad green tea. Yeah, it's kind of nutty. It's got that kind of nutty, slightly oxidized um, notes of the more kind of gunpowder green teas, the lower quality yeah. gunpowder green teas. Yeah. It's kind of got that kind of nutty note. It's got a little bit of straw, a bit of um, that um, herbaceous dried herbs. I would say it's got a little bit of... Um, that licorice kind of sweetness to it. Why don't you keep drinking it that? It does have a licorice. That's why it Ask reminds me a bit of the, um, uh, when we drink River High, it has that licorice sweetness. It yeah. has that similar kind of sweetness. So it's got those kind of medicinal, almost like ginseng mm. um, kind of, um, yeah, that kind of anise herbal sweetness to it. So let's yeah. brew it Gong Fu style and see how that uh, shows itself. Oh, let's give the buffalo a little bit of this Aww. Charleston tea. We haven't used this one in we ages. Need that kettle always here. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Okay. So we're just going to give this a, a, a 10 second steeping. I'll put it down here because you're going to steal it. I can feel it. Probably. Um, Any other questions? Yeah, what's the. Uh, okay. What is. 
the difference between using a porcelain and glass for Kung Fu? Porcelain glass, okay, so um, the difference is, is in terms of flavour, nothing at all because both of them are glazed and therefore both of them are going to be transparent in terms of flavour, so they're great for tasting teas. So if you don't want any adulteration from clay, any, any um, change in the taste, porcelain and glass are both good. The main difference is that glass uh, conducts heat quicker, so it will cool down quicker and therefore it's more suited to delicate teas for teas that are being brewed at under kind of 90 degrees or 195 Fahrenheit because otherwise the glass gets very hot as well. So I would recommend that you use glass predominantly for the cooler brewing teas, although you can brew them for anything if you're having a teapot. It's just if you're using a guy one, you will potentially burn your hands. Porcelain is just a universal. It just works for every single tea type. Right. Here's the colour of the liquor. Can you do a bit of a focus? Yeah. Sun. Focus sun. There we go. What colour would you say that is? It's kind of a um, uh, oxidised apple juice. Okay. Yeah, Coloured. some sort of oxidised green apple juice colour. Mm-hmm. So what are you guys drinking? My guess is that you are drinking some really high quality stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. There's some people, I saw someone drinking some uh, 2010 White Peony. 2010 White Peony, ooh nice, nice, very nice. And what else are you um, drinking? Who else do you have? Uh, I saw before some people saying they were going to be drinking some Smoky Lapsangs. Some oh, yeah. people are going to be drinking some Jade Star. Some people are drinking herbal teas, you know, nice like herbal teas. linden flower. Linden flower, love linden flower. It's a nice, nice tisane. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try this. Um, let's try this Gong Fu brewed Charleston green tea. And cheers to everybody at Bigelow Tea and ah. at Charleston Tea Plantation. You know, keep pushing out the good stuff. You know, always, always push, push, push to 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 um, satisfy the demands of these tea heads. These guys in this chat room, those are the guys you need to be, guys and girls that you need to be impressing. <laughs> so, Yasha mm. Tansong, Monocle Boss. Monocle Boss. Needle. Nice, we have a Monocle Boss drinker oh, yeah. out there. Frozen <laughs> Summit, some Daji Ling, Autumn Jin Guan Yin from Verdant Tea, Lost Robe. Oh, someone People was loving asking. the cat, Mishkin's looking very chilled at the moment. <laughs> I didn't even realize. So, <laughs> Gong Fu, definitely better, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much yeah, yeah, brighter, yeah, much juicier, much brighter. I get some little Just, bits of apple notes yeah. to it. Mm. It's more complex, but I would still say, personally, I still find it a bit flat. I want a bit more Look, juice. it's but, definitely you know, not. It's not bitter, you know, I can drink it, no problem. It's like, actually quite an easy drinking tea, considering that it's a broken leaf actually and they don't i mean ideally i would like to scope this tea for you but i don't have any information about that i'm assuming it's a spring picked tea um, i'm assuming it's the tea tips it's definitely machine harvested i don't know the cultivar the origin is as i said this uh wat malau island apologies if i'm um, pronouncing it wrong in south carolina charleston and the elevation i'm not sure but i'm gonna guess it's quite low elevation tea mm. Sorry, Nick. Yeah, we still drink water. <laughs> we do love water, even though we drink a lot of tea. <laughs> nice to see you, Ed, drinking Golden Bud. Adam, with your Fukumushi Sencha, we have got some Japanese tea coming. I promise all yeah. you guys that are writing in saying, what about Japanese greens? What about Japanese teas? We've always had some Japanese greens, but we're extending the range and we've done some videos. We've traveled in Japan. We're just waiting now to get all the teas in and then we're gonna be releasing all of that footage. So look out for that. So listen, I would say this is a decent everyday drinking green tea. It's surprisingly lacking in astringency considering mm, the fact true. that it is um, a broken leaf with stems. Yeah. It's got herbaceous notes. It's mm. got um, kind of um, slightly dried grass and yeah. it, it, it lacks the kind of floral, it lacks the, the, the real brightness, the real juicy bright terpenes that you look for in really high quality greens. But having said that, I think this is a really, really 
nice and I don't know how affordable or I don't know the price of this, but I'm assuming a relatively affordable green tea for everyday green uh, drinking. And you know what? New World Tea, I celebrate it always. Well done, USA. Well done for, 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 for producing your own tea um, and long may it continue. Mm. Any other mm -hmm. questions? Um, yes. Go for um, it. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, simple question. I have this 2011 Laosha Tour right poor yeah and I do not know how to how much to use for a hundred mil guy one it's one of those little poor so if it's a tour if it's a standard tour um, it usually is about five grams um, in there um, we normally recommend for for poor something in the region of about five grams per hundred mil something like that I would say is a good kind of um, place to start and then you can tweak it from there and rinse it well to start with yeah make sure you rinse it at least a couple of times um, like just a, to, to give it a bit of um, 15 seconds yeah clear the mustiness out of it can you put some more water in yeah and then brewing time probably brewing time seconds. um you know is 15 20 seconds as usual yeah this is so weird because we're sitting in our living room a place which we've sat many many times obviously and it feels like I'm just talking to nobody, but <laughs> there are currently 245 people out there. And I'm missing so many questions. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying. Okay, so let me look at some. Um, do I believe the Lao Ban Jiang hype? Ooh, that's a good question. Ooh, that is a good question. Listen, there is hype in tea across all tea types. Um, and that hype doesn't just come from the sellers, it comes from the farmers, it comes from the growers. Everybody's hyping their product up um, to some extent. And our job is to try to filter out the truth from the hype. Um, but really, our job is to simply ignore all of that and taste the tea. And if we like the tea and we enjoy the taste of the tea, um, and we think it's a good price point for that tea, then we will purchase it. Then once we discover more about it, we try to give you that information. I think it's important that we try to give you the information and we try to make sure that that information is um, as truthful um, as possible. So we try to go through as much as possible to, to uh, disassemble the hype, deconstruct it. We've been sourcing uh, from China um, since the 1970s and I personally have been sourcing for 15 years tea. So I've kind of heard every story under the sun regarding these teas. Well, actually, I think I have, but every time I go back to China, there's another story which I haven't heard. But I thought I've, I think I've heard pretty much uh, every story. So I'm pretty adept at knowing which are lies and which are truthful. I have to say, however, that there's a reverse to that, that, you know, there's a lot of people kind of who believe that anything um, that it comes out of a tea seller's mouth is hype. And that's not true. Um, this, there are stories which are absolutely true. There are, you know, plantations which are incredible um, and that, that deserve the hype that they um, are given or the, the praise that they are given. So it's a balance. You need, to, you need to always be discerning. But at the end of the day, it's all about taste and price point. If the taste of the tea works with the price point, then you go for it. How are we looking, guys? I'm getting a little error here saying that um, this, the, the, de the, the video may be buffering. Let me know if the video is buffering in any way um, because I need to know for next time whether or not I need to change the settings. I wanted to try to make the quality of the video as high as possible. Do you want another question? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, uh, is the new Guru going to be more expensive than the old one? Uh, the new Gongfu Guru um, may be, uh, I actually really don't know, I haven't priced it yet. Um, we need to see how much it costs when it all gets here. My uh, instinct is unlikely to be much more. We may be talking tiny percentages, there will be some difference, but it's not going to be anything really a uh, huge difference. However, the B-Stock um, Gongfu Guru, and when I say B-Stock, I don't mean it's faulty in any way it works perfectly fine it's still going to be a great you know um, addition to your collection it's still going to look amazing there's just a few little things that as a picky person like me I don't really like to see like a little bit of extra glue or maybe there's a slight kind of mark on the wood 
So I actually think that the B-Stock is a great bargain for people who want um, um, a Gong Fu Guru and I think that the price difference is about 20% less. So you can save around $50 or something like that. So, you know, it's good. So looking like the video is still looking good, so I'm gonna ignore this YouTube error um, and uh, I trust you guys out there. Right, let's move on to the breakfast tea. Oh, I'm yeah? excited, yeah. And I always find it funny when people talk about English breakfast tea because English breakfast tea was not invented in England. Yeah. <laughs> there are kind of two strains to the story. One of the strains is that it was invented in the US um, by a USA merchant who uh, created a blend of different Souchongs and Buhis and created this English, this breakfast blend um, that became English breakfast tea um, because the English do like to drink strong black tea for their breakfast. The other strain of the story is that it was a Scottish vendor who created the original strong black English breakfast blend. This blend is the Charleston breakfast tea. So that's very authentic. It's not English breakfast tea. It's a Charleston breakfast tea. But it is funny how everyone thinks English breakfast tea is a classically English tea, when in fact it wasn't actually created in England at all. <laughs> I hope you don't mind uh, Bigelow tea if you're watching. I'm going to brew this Gong Fu style because I kind of know that it's going to be better. Right, so. Um, more questions? Let's just take a look at this leaf. Yeah. <laughs> so here you go, guys. This is Charleston breakfast tea. Boom. Look at the color. It's kind of a nice uh, dark ruby brown auburn color. Yeah. But again, it is um, machine picked, mm. machine harvested, and it looks very, I'm almost certain that it must be machine produced as well. The key difference here between black teas that of, of um, um, the old terroir, the old uh, country black teas, the handmade black teas, is that this is going to be damaged before it was oxidized. And so you can have a lot of cut edges on the leaf before it goes through the oxidation. And that tends to mean that the tea is going to be stronger in terms of astringency and bitterness and it's not gonna be as high quality as if you left the leaf whole, but we will see. I'm gonna eyeball this and put about three teaspoons in here. Let's give it a smell. Any other questions? Yes, uh, I have. Loads of them coming. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything wrong with being machine picked? Um, yes. Is the simple answer to that. Uh, machine picked is never going to be as accurate as hand picked. Hand picked, you're getting exactly the leaf that you're looking for, exactly the, 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 the set of leaves, the bud, bud in one leaf, bud in two leaf, up to three leaves, up to four leaves. You're not going to be able to get that accuracy with machine picked. Also with machine picked, they will be picking up more indiscriminately. So you're going to be picking up leaves that may have been damaged slightly, uh, leaves that have been bitten. You will also pick up potential twigs and insects and things like that. I'm not trying to freak people out, but that's just the nature of machine picking. Um, and therefore it's never going to have the same quality um, as hand picked and you will taste that in the tea. So this has a, has a vaguely kind of carob chocolate note to it. It's got a little bit of over-oxidized black cherries, I would say. Yeah. So overripe black cherries. It's not an unpleasant aroma. In fact, it's quite nice. There's a bit of pine smell to it, slightly. Yeah, some wood. Mm -hmm. But again, what's surprising me here is a note of creaminess, which I've noticed in, in that, in the that other, one. other one as well, in the green tea. Okay, yeah. so this is boiling water, yeah? This is 96 96 degrees. degrees. Okay, which is about 205. Yeah. We're going to give this a quick Rinsage. rinse. Uh, another question. Yeah. Uh, can you name some of the songs you worked on when you were still in the music industry? <laughs> <laughs> that was from ages ago. That was many, many, many moons ago when I was working in the music industry. I used to work with, um, I did some sessions with Stereo MCs. I don't know if you know the Stereo MCs. Um, they were big at the time. That shows you how old I was. Um, when I was doing it. Um, so yeah, we worked with them. 
Um, I've done stuff a lot within the kind of dance music arena. Um, not EDM so much, but more related to kind of reggae and breakbeat. I was doing a lot of breaks. We were into drum and bass at the time um, as well. This was kind of the 90s um, and early 2000s. Um, but yeah, we worked with loads of different people um, within the kind of dance community. Mm -hmm. All right, let's give a smell to these. Right, so this is what I expected. We're getting that very classic, very brisk um, uh, aroma. And what I mean by brisk is it's, <gasps> it's, it's kind of, it's very strong. It's um, refreshing on the nose, it's mineral, but it's also got a kind of um, slaty kind of flatness to it. And um, sourness, yeah. like a sour fruit of some kind. I kind of like that smell. This reminds me of, of a high quality uh, yeah, you like know, a breakfast is, blend. Yeah, it's, it's got, got a bit nice fruity notes kind of, in it. Kind of got that, um, yeah, it's got, but not, not fruit as in kind of... Um, fresh fruit. Fresh fruit, more kind more of like, over-oxidized yeah, fruit. Yeah, like stewed or with salt. Infected with mushroom, salt. yeah, of course I've heard of infected mushroom, yeah. I didn't work with them, but I know them. Um, all right, so... Cool. Um, Don, you drink tea and herbs, but do you smoke weed? <laughs> I knew someone was going to ask that so <laughs> That's almost a classic question. Um, I'll leave that to your imagination. <laughs> right, so let's... Um, brew some. Brew some of this tea. I have another question for you. Yeah. Um, this is kind of more techy. How do you generally evaluate the wet leaf appearance for Sheng Pur consistency, mm. colour, grade? And it says, I generally find Sheng is more of a mixed bag than other teas when it comes to appearance. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that there are some things that I do look for with Sheng's. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Sheng is a raw Pur tea. Um, I think that Sheng's, I tend to look for larger leaves, generally. I look for very whole, larger leaves, um, you know, and, and a good bud set. So you get a bit of bud and you're getting, you know, the first leaf, second leaf, maybe even the third leaf, but a very complete set. I find that that helps. If you're seeing a lot of broken leaf, it generally means that it was kind of potentially a blended or maybe even um, kind of the last of the batch. So I look for very whole leaves. I look for a sheen. It needs to have a nice um, sheen of hairs on it. I want to know that it's been picked at the optimal time. So you need to see uh, you know, some of the sheen. Look, there are no hard and fast rules, just like anything in tea. But that, those are the kind of things I look for. In terms of color, it depends if it's uh, you know, aged or if it's uh, young. If it's young, you know, you're, you're looking for something that, I, I, I think it's not just about, it's not really about the color, it's about how vibrant whatever color it is. So if it's a kind of more green to kind of turtle green kind of color, you just want it to be very vibrant and, and look very rich. If it looks a bit kind of matte and a bit kind of um, subdued and gray, then it tends, tends not to be so uh, good. Take a look at the liquor. I have to say the liquor of this is a beautiful color. It is beautiful. Really, really nice color. Yeah. Okay. Let's give this a taste. Uh, quick one. Um, do you know of any good tea education places in North Carolina, USA? Or how Sorry, did guys. you go about your education? Tea Ooh. education is what we are trying to uh, really um, contribute to here. Um, and there are um, books out there. Um, some, I've never found a book that I wholeheartedly agree with everything. Um, there are some Chinese books that have very bad translations. There are some Western books that um, are decent. Um, I wouldn't say that they're perfect in any way. Um, but um, in terms of South Carolina yeah. uh, or North Carolina, I North have Carolina, no so. idea. I'm so sorry. Cheers. Cheers. All right. So classic, very straight ahead breakfast tea. Um, refreshing, gives you the quench, gives you the bite. If you wanted to combine it with lemon, you could. If you wanted to combine it with milk, you could. Yeah. It has kind of enough strength to be able to handle it. I would say that there isn't much complexity. No. It's quite mm. simple in terms of taste. Um, yeah. And it would cut through very greasy food. 
Yeah. You know, so the classic English breakfast pairing for this would work very well. Um, it would cut through that very well. It's very, very cutting, astringent and it's quenching. A, it's a weird thing because the astringency is not like a green tea astringency. It's more, you know, the white bit of the peel of like an orange peel. So you were the pushing. Pith. Yeah, it kind of has yeah. that kind of It's got of a slight, a slight pithy. Yeah. Pithy bitterness, yeah. yeah, a slight kind of citrus pithy yeah. bitterness, and it does have some citrus notes. I yeah. think you know it so, has a little bit of kind of uh, lemoniness to yeah. it. So it doesn't bother me actually. It's but. it's again, I, I would say it's a good everyday drinking tea. Yeah, it's leaving my mouth a bit dry, a bit dry, yeah. and that kind of chalky dry. Yeah. You know, it's not a nice dry. It feels like it's left something there a little bit. Yeah, um, but um, I can imagine that this could potentially work with milk if you were I moving think it into it. Yeah. Because you know, when you cut a leaf <laughs> before <laughs> oxidation, so you're actually um, machine cutting the leaf before oxidation, you have so much uh, surface area to oxidize, it tends to make a tea which is too astringent um, to drink by itself and more uh, readily combined with milk or lemon, which both, they both serve the same purpose of reducing down the level of uh, bitterness and astringency. Um, there are theories or there are conspiracy theories that um, this method of making tea, this machine CTC method was really done in conjunction with the sugar and milk companies to try to make uh, sure that everybody's profits um, uh, rise um, when more and more people drink tea. I don't know if that's true or not, that conspiracy theory, um, but it's one that is out there. Um, and this certainly is a very refreshing, very simple, um, it reminds me a lot of, Br of British, your, your classic British brews. Um, and um, nothing wrong with that if you enjoy that type of tea. It's got a slight nuttiness to it, like a kind of green chestnut nuttiness to it. Any other questions out there? Yeah. Um, wow. How do you store your tea? Oh, there's a big question. Depending <laughs> on which type of tea, there's, we are going to do videos on that, definitely. Yeah, because that's quite an epic... You know, Any something. May Leaf Yiwu soon? Um, oh, you. Yes, Did there you is. Find one? There remember. is, but it's going to be a stupid, stupid, stupid limited edition um, tasters only um, because it is very expensive. We will be announcing that in about three weeks, I guess. We have so many teas coming. Oh, a quick word. Hmm. I know that our website has a lot of out of stock products on them and um, that it can seem like we just don't have a lot of stock of products. And to some extent that is true. However, the reason why we've left a lot of these out of stock products there, which may potentially be discontinued, is because of the fact that the website is still relatively new and we wanted everybody who had purchased our tea previously to be able to unlock the tea and add it to their collection. For those of you who um, don't know, the Mayleaf platform is all about collecting tea. And so we wanted to leave these products there so they could unlock them, add them to their collection, and then that will be fixed for eternity in their collection that they've tried them. The moment that I discontinue the product, they can no longer do that. So we've intentionally left an extended period where a lot of products that we're not gonna get back or we're not gonna get back this year are still live on the website and showing out of stock. So for those of you wondering why we've got so much out of stock, things like Tiger Spirit and Sacred Owl, which are obviously discontinued, and now Jade Star, oh, sadly, yeah. now Jade That's Star. It. Is, uh, is no more. Um, and so that's another one that we are going to discontinue, but we're intentionally leaving them oh, so people yeah. can add it to their collection. Can we get another guy one? Yeah, is that sure. possible? Sounds good. Um, so I will look at the questions here. Well, All right, guys, it's just you and me. Oh, there was one that kept coming up, which is what was your first tea and what was my first What was tea? our first tea? Um, I guess, um, uh, you mean what was the first true tea that I fell in love with? Um, everybody who's seen my tea story will know that it, it all started with a, an iron goddess, with a Tie Guan Yin, as with most people. Um, and then I remember second tea that I really fell in love with was Golden Bada, um, uh, uh, Dian Hong, uh, Yunnan black tea made from the buds. Uh, Yunnan Dian Hong was the second tea that I really, really fell in love with. And uh, from there, 
I fell deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. J Star is my favorite. I have two cakes here. Well, TKO, uh, <laughs> we know you and your Instagram feed. You do some beautiful pictures. If you haven't seen his Instagram, go check out TKO on Instagram. He does some amazing uh, pictures. Yeah. And amazing. you managed to snap up probably one of our, uh, well, two of our last uh, few ever <laughs> batch of Jade Star. So the, yeah. the um, last uh, cakes I think sold last week and that's it. We do not have any more Jade Star. But there will be some special announcements, announcements regarding Jade Star and aged white tea coming up very shortly. So keep an eye for that. Mm -hmm. Alexander, do we ever cook with tea? Another very good <laughs> question. <laughs> And again, I can't say too much, but there will be videos upcoming that may well interest you regarding tea and cooking. Um, so keep an eye for that. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be too um, uh, cryptic about these things, but you know, I can't mm -hmm. give away everything that we're going to be doing. Uh, we've got lots and lots planned. Nick, we'll make a um, tea uh, sipping ASMR soon because we were thinking about it anyway. So, ASMR, yeah. we love our ASMRs. I do enjoy watching ASMR yeah. as well. So um, we did a, a, a brewing tea a ASMR, a couple of them. Uh, check them out if you haven't seen them before. Um, but we will be uh, doing more. We've got uh, plans to do more ASMR stuff. Sorry, sorry, Alexander. I know I'm, I'm teasing a little bit, but you know. <laughs> um, so cheeky. Is there a popped rice pua, like a Genmai Cha equivalent? Puja. Um, that could be quite There is, um, what is there? There's, there is a, a, a fermented rice scented cooked pu'er that is on the market. Uh, we used to sell it, but we don't anymore. It's not cooked actually, it was raw. A fermented rice raw pu'er, fermented rice scented raw pu'er, um, which has a kind of interesting taste. Not particularly amazing, but it has an interesting taste, but nothing like genmai cha, no popped. Mm. Oh, roasted rice. Yeah. Okay. Um, you uh, go ahead. Let me uh, let any... me show show these viewers this first. Uh, Sam was saying I'm trying to get into dance song. Any recommendations? We've got quite a few. I okay. I have a few dance, dance songs. songs. I would always say start with a Milan Tiang dance song, which is our Royal Peach, Peach Orchid. Orchid. Coming um, back soon. Yeah, which is coming next week. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the poor busy bees in the warehouse um, are busy, busy trying to package <laughs> all of the spring teas that are coming up. So uh, I keep asking them to hurry, but you know, we can't push them too far. Um, so I would go for a Milan Siang or Royal Peach Orchid or Honey Orchid Dan Song. That's a good starting point mm. and is a really nice way to introduce yourself to Dan Songs because you get all of those fruity notes, yeah. you get all of the brightness, you get the quench. Um, and if you brew it carefully, it's a little bit picky, the tea, um, you won't get too much of the astringency. Mm. And then you can start to move into the more creamier um, notes, the more kind of Dawu Yeers. We've got a Dawu Yeer Dan Song coming in about, again, two or three weeks time. We've got um, our duck Yasha ducks, Duck Shit Oolong. Uh, mm. Duck Shit is, is in stock currently um, and new batches of that have come in and they are amazing as well. So the 2017 batches, yeah. we've got loads and loads of tea. I mean, it's crazy how much tea we've got. Yeah, Duck Shit is really nice. Once you get into dance songs, like it's, it really is so yummy. <laughs> but it is quite an expensive tea. So I would start with the Royal Peach. And I have to so. say, just in general, the price of dance songs in yeah. the last two years have just gone stupid mm. and it kind of annoys me um but you know we have to deal with what the market price is um and so we're being very careful as always you know we always pick the best tea that we can find as long as it is also at a price which i think is fair and a lot of these dance songs they are just um the popularity of dance song is meaning that the price is going up too high do you want to focus on this yeah so this is the last tea we're going to be tasting and this is our, um, oh, not our, this is the Charleston <laughs> Tea Plantation's first flush. This is their first flush black tea. So I guess that this is gonna be their premium um, offering on the market. So this is their first flush. It looks darker. It looks a little bit less stemmy. It yeah. looks a little bit more um, fine um, pickings and fine harvest. 
So I have more hope uh, for this one in terms of a black tea. Still quite uh, the same kind of size leaf. Yeah, it's still machine picked, um, clearly, and it's still machine processed. Rui, of course you're, you're drinking a, a, a Lao Banjang. It seems like <laughs> your, your collection is full of them. <laughs> um, oh yeah, um, so teas uh, can stain the teeth. Um, how do you keep your teeth so white? <laughs> um, uh, tea staining the teeth? Yeah. Um, There's a few things that you can do. Yeah, well. I mean, you know, we just use a good toothpaste. <laughs> Yeah, we actually, there's one toothpaste that has so baking, baking soda. soda toothpaste with baking good. soda is definitely the, the way yeah. to go. Just, you know, and just make sure you go to your hygienist, uh, you know, a little bit more often and it will be fine. I right. don't, but I probably should at some point. Hiya, what do you think of those blended teas, especially those with fruits and flowers? Um, okay, well, many of you will know my answer to this. I have done a video about this already. I do not have a problem with teas that are blended where tea is the star of the show, the tea is meant to shine, they use high quality tea and they're blending it very carefully with certain fruits or flowers or other herbals that work well with the tea. But the fact is that the majority of blended scented teas is the absolute opposite. You're taking low quality tea and you're scenting it um, kind of indiscriminately for looks and you are basically also, tend, they tend to use artificial flavors and artificial scents, which is nothing um, that is related to true tea culture. So I would avoid those blended and scented teas uh, completely but if you find one that's a very simple blend we have a very small range of blended teas like six or seven where we took our time and we really chose the same tea that we sell and we um, blended it accordingly it smells quite nice kind of mm. similar to the last one what's that one meant to be this is first flush so this is ah. similar but it definitely has a bit more depth to it it definitely has a little bit more um it's got a bit more floral. I don't know which flowers. Um, mm. It's got just, it's the same flavor profile, but slightly deeper. Um, yeah. It's got a longer, um, uh, longer lasting um, persistence on the nose. Um, so I, I have a feeling it's gonna taste very similar, um, but probably have leave a longer finish. And that was part of my criticism of the last tea. Uh, the Charleston breakfast tea is that it was a bit too short. Um, well, it was, it was very short and very dry. So this one hopefully will have a little bit more in terms of depth to it. Yeah. Uh, la -la. Do you think it's possible to age tea? Uh, what is it possible to age tea in wooden barrels like whiskey? Is it possible to age tea in wooden barrels yeah. like whiskey? Um, very good question. Um, the, the answer to that, uh, I, I'm assuming you mean dry and not wet, as in like, you know, liquor or dry or, or wet um, uh, brewed tea. Um, the answer to that is, well, I don't know, is the simple answer to that. I've never tried it before. I very much doubt that there's going to be a huge effect in terms of the wood. It certainly isn't going to be anything like a whiskey where the cask is actually interacting with the, the, the grain alcohol and it's actually creating this marriage of flavors between them. So you're going to get some of the scent of the wood, sure, um, but it's not necessarily going to be something that you um, are going to pick up a huge um, uh, flavor change. Um, a lot of puas are stored in bamboo, bamboo uh, casks, uh, sorry, bamboo uh, wrappings. Um, and I don't think it makes that much difference if you store them like that or you store them um, uh, in other ways. So I don't think it will make a huge difference, but that's just a guess. Here you go, take a look at the color of this. Can you focus? So this is slightly more orange in its color profile than the, than the one before. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a little bit more orange. It looks a little bit more oxidized, actually. A bit cloudier than the. A bit cloudier. Other one. So let's see. Mm. Any mm. other questions? Yes. Uh... Blaze it. What do you mean, James? Blaze it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Is that the same guy that said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Someone said, can I roll a tea blunt? Can you I'm roll really, a tea blunt? I don't know, it's Nick. You know what you can do? I have to say, if you really are interested in that kind of world, um, you can try vaping with tea. It's actually quite interesting. Yeah, it's quite a nice flavour. It's not bad. You can get some good flavour. All right, so, mm. cheers. The first flush. The cheers. premium. The premium Charleston Tea Plantation Tea. Yeah, very similar to the last one. But, rounder, more depth on the nose. Mm, that's true. Gives my tongue a little bit of a tingle, so there is a physical sensation here. The problem that I have with these teas is the oxidation process has been done, in my opinion, in the wrong order. So it's kind of got a green oxidized taste as opposed to leaving um, the leaf um, uh, whole, rolling it and letting it oxidize. It just creates a slightly darker tasting uh, black tea. This one, it tastes like the, the leaf has been taken, chopped up, um, and then left to oxidize with all of that surface area. And it has so much liquor, liquid water in the leaf that it just creates this sourness and this astringency, which um, I personally um, think doesn't really work when you're drinking black tea by itself. I prefer it um, to be um, processed in the traditional orthodox way where they don't cut the leaf beforehand and that makes a much richer, more, um, um, the flavor profile goes away from just kind of oxidized green into a much more complex individual flavor profile. So I'm assuming that Bigelow Tea are not watching or if they are, I just would say, maybe you'd want to try and experiment with taking this high quality leaf that you're picking and doing a small batch where you don't cut the leaf before oxidation, see what comes up. You may find that it makes a really incredible high premium uh, tea for you, um, which uh, you may want to introduce to your market. I don't know. Hmm. It's just uh, my two cents worth. <laughs> How many times a week um, do you do a tea ceremony? Well, if that includes Gong Fu Brewing, then like every, every day, day. Yeah. <laughs> at we, least we drink times. tea. We drink tea at least, at least. Morning and evening at least. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm drinking throughout the day as well. Day, and yeah. if we're doing a tea tasting session, then it will be, I mean, if we're selecting teas, then we'll taste for days on end. Um, this leaves a slight menthol. It kind of reminds me a little bit True. of Ruby. It's got a little True. bit of Ruby 18 cultivar time release. Yeah but very, very small, very slight. Just that menthol freshness. Those yeah. of you who've had um, a Ruby Assam uh, cultivar from Taiwan, Ruby 18, you'll know what I mean. It's got that slight minty freshness to it. Definitely this is the better tea um, compared to the English breakfast uh, or Charleston breakfast blend. Yeah, it's got more of the earthy notes on top of the menthol. It's, it's quite nice. Scott, do we ever drink kombucha? Yes, we do. Mm, we've yes. got one We've upstairs. got scobies in the works all around us all the time and we're trying lots of different teas. Mm. So yes, we do experiment with kombucha. Yeah, there's some good teas out there for kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions? Yes. Um, uh, do you have any spiritual or religious beliefs? Oh wow, this is getting quite deep. Um, spiritual or religious beliefs? Wow, that's a whole other video. <laughs> um, why did you pick that question? I, that's, like, that's I such think a it was interesting. Such like, a difficult <laughs> question. It's <laughs> like a random. Uh, short answer is yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, 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 I do. Um, I'm a great believer that spirituality is something that we all have, and 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 we all express it differently um, and even dare I say it the people that claim that they're not spiritual in any way I think are um, pulling the wool over their eyes a little bit I'm not saying that you need to subscribe to a generic religion at all but you know how can you be living how can you be in existence how can you have this experience this human experience called life and not feel in some way um, any kind of spirituality, I find that very difficult to understand or believe. And I think that, yes, we all have spirituality, but this is going off topic a little bit. And to be honest with you, 
I know that I'm going to be on very, very um, shaky ground. I'm happy to talk about these things, um, but probably not in this setting. We can maybe do a complete other one, an, an other uh, question answer all about my beliefs. Um, and, I, and for those of you who know, I also um, am involved in Chinese medicine and involved in the politics of Chinese medicine, the science of Chinese medicine, trying to break down dogmas in Chinese medicine, uh, in, in medical science. Um, so I'm involved in a lot of those things and I'm happy to maybe sit down and have a session with you guys where we talk about that and discuss it and we can have a bit more of a question and answer. But let's stick to tea today. Sorry, sorry, I won't do that again. That's all right. <laughs> I got Swiss confused. answer. Yes, Jürgen, it was very, uh, it was very uh, uh, Swiss, my answer. I, I don't want to offend anybody out there. Okay, uh, any changes to the new Gong Fu Guru and any new teapots for sale coming soon? Because that's come up quite a few times, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry, hold that. Rui, you're very spiritual after 15 cups of, of Lao Van Zhang. Yes. Uh, uh, that's actually a good point. You know, um, you d if you don't feel you're spiritual, it, you know, that's one thing. But there's a difference between, um, I guess, subscribing to a religion and then at the same time just being mindful of precious things in life and being precious of that. And I know that there's a distinction. I'm not going to get into the distinctions of those, but you know, an appreciation. I think any, everybody should have an appreciation of the opportunity and this amazing experience that we are all given, the human experience, and it's incredible. All right. Uh, uh, I, love, I love Enzo Ma. Could have just said tea is my religion. That's, that's so good. That's true. Been, that would have been a good one. See, you're smarter than me. Um, <laughs> What was the question? Gong Fu Guru. Yeah, new Gong Fu Guru. New Gong Fu Guru, is there going to be any changes from the first one? There are one? some slight modifications, very, very small. Um, because actually, you know, we did, we road tested this unit to the absolute maximum. We use it every single day. So we kind of know, you know, that generally uh, there was not that much, in my opinion, that we needed to do to improve it. There are a few modifications. One of them is that we've got um, a plastic insert for the tray. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be able to put a molded plastic insert. And that means that it's just going to um, keep the wood a little bit uh, cleaner. So it stops the tea stains from forming on the wood a little bit. Um, we've also changed the thicknesses and construction of the box a little bit. Um, we've made it a little bit thicker. Um, so we've just kind of tweaked it a little bit, but not huge, not huge differences. Any other questions? Uh, new teapots coming. New teapots coming. Yes. We've got some Kyusu's coming. Uh, yeah. Uh, we've got um, some new glass teaware coming. We've got um, some um, porcelain which is being made for us which is taking an age so for those of you yeah. who saw the YouTube video in Dehua which I posted about two months ago when we were in Dehua designing our teaware that project is still ongoing uh, we had some problems with the samples that were sent to us we had to reject them so it's taking longer and so for all of you those of you who are complaining that we've don't have enough tea wear and stock. Believe me, I know, and I'm frustrated about it, but we are trying to get the tea wear designed to our specifications, and that takes time. And um, it will include a tea boat, by the way. Does it? You're yeah, giving it does. away all the information. Yes, there is tea boat. Uh, <laughs> there are tea boats in the works that we're trying to, but that's one of the areas that is causing problems with the molds and they're, really? they're breaking. So oh, we want to make sure that they're right before we put them out. Hmm. Um, why is duck shit called like that? <laughs> duck shit oolong. The story of duck shit oolong and the reason why it's called duck shit supposedly is that the farmer who first discovered duck shit and fell in love with this tea and decided that this was an incredible tea to bring to market didn't want his neighbours to be picking from the same bushes and making the same tea from this uh, duck shit cultivar, from this yasha cultivar. And so um, he said that the soil in that area, which is naturally quite yellow, is yellow because there's lots of duck shit in that area around that soil. And he said that to try to um, prevent his neighbors from picking in that area because they would assume that the tea would be compromised. So it was supposedly a form of protectionism to protect uh, his neighbors from uh, making uh, the same tea. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah, you... mm. Has the new Milan Xiang changed much in flavor profile than last year's batch? Um, yes, I think that, that um, okay, so with tea, batches make a huge difference. And I think that this is something that um, 
can cause some people frustration, but I hope that for most of you, it's a source. <laughs> she is the most clumsy person on the planet. The reason I'm laughing is because this happens every hour. Michigan's uh, so used to it. Like literally I would be breaking stuff in the kitchen and he'd just like look up like whatever. <laughs> um, so, um, so batches will change and they should change because if you are buying um, single, uh, single batch tea, then you are tasting the batch that is being picked. If you are buying blended tea, then the art and the skill of the blender is to make a consistent product year in, year out. So they take tea from different plantations, different batches to try to make the same uh, tea flavor profile. But with single batch tea, it's all about tasting the individuality of the batch and we celebrate that and we explore those batches. And so inevitably the batches will taste different. And so in the case of Milan Xiang or our raw peach, I think that, that every batch is slightly different. We try to you know, keep it in the same ballpark, obviously, mm. where you're looking at those honeyed aromas, you're looking at those orchid aromas, you're looking at those peach flavors, but the balance can alter. Sometimes it can be a little bit more honey-like, sometimes it can be very juicy and fruit-like, mm. um, but they do change. Um, so yeah, um, the batches change. All of our tea has batch, have batch numbers on the back of them, um, mm -hmm. and so you'll see. And if we find that a batch is so different from our previous batches, but we love the tea, then what we'll tend to do is we'll actually name it something else. So that's the reason why we have the naming system that we have. Otherwise, we could have a thousand Lapsang Souchongs out there, yeah. and you know they will all be called Lapsang Souchong, which doesn't really help anybody. So we try to kind of name accordingly, um, according to oh, keeping you. batch consistent. Sorry, um, what's a tea boat? Where's for you? You've got a tea boat somewhere, right? Oh yeah, I'll show you. We'll show you what a tea boat <laughs> is. And I've got some more questions. I will look at these questions. <clears throat> um, da, 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 da. Uh. Any plans on having a shipping to the US option cheaper than nineteen dollars? I love it. Okay, so shipping to the US. Yes, we. Uh, are, Okay, first of all, we never add anything to our shipping charges, okay? In fact, on, for a lot of um, our shipping charges, we actually take a hit and we uh, um, pay a little bit of the money. So we never charge anything extra on shipping charges. Um, it's frustrating for us that the shipping charges, um, that we can't negotiate even better deals. We, ha we are always negotiating and for those of you who were buying in two years ago, you would notice that the shipping charges have gone down quite considerably. We are thinking about different ways that we can do this. It's not very easy because of the operation that we run where everything is small batch. Mm. Um, so if we, if we had a real commodity product where we had, you know, thousand kilos of a certain tea, we could ship some of it to a US warehouse, we could ship some, ship some of it to uh, the UK and we could, you know, uh, sort it out that way. But because we buy in such small batches, um, we can't split the batch. I mean, it would, it would cause us a real headache already as it is with uh, our small batches, it causes problems um, just being in the UK. So splitting the batch is very difficult. But we are going to continue, I promise, we will persist and continue to find the best way to get the tea to you, US, and not just US, all international tea heads out there. We are always working to find ways to reduce the price of the shipping, and we're going to try and partner up with some drop shippers, if possible, to try and make that easier for you guys. Because, you know, it's terrible to spend the money on the shipping. You want to just spend the money on the tea. I get that. Believe me, I get that because I have to get lots of tea coming from all over and I really dislike it when our shipping is inefficient. Right so this is a tea boat. Oh, yeah. This is an example of a tea boat here. Um, it's got um, a platform and it's got um, a small groove area where it can collect water. It's not going to collect anywhere near the capacity of tea, rinse and water than the Gongfu Guru or one of these water trays, but it is useful for kind of um, small brewing, small sessions, or if you want to just keep things small and you can go and empty it um, um, every now and again. So this is a really nice way yeah. to brew your tea. Usually it involves the guy one sitting on here yeah. and then you have your cups around it like that. Yeah. So yes, that's a tea boat. That's a tea boat, but I don't like the ones where it's too small because sometimes you know you have a smaller mm. a space here. 
It's just too fussy. I like that. Yeah, so we, we, we're making our own and um, we hopefully it will be exactly to our specifications. Okay, if you could only drink one category of tea for the rest of your life, what would it be? Yeah, you? that's a really <laughs> mean question. Who asked that question? <laughs> that is Ian, Ian Young. Ian, why are you asking me such a hard question? Um, if I could only pick one type of tea? <clears throat> category of tea, yeah, I guess one type. I would <clears throat> pick the one with the most amount of variation. Um, in terms of flavor mm. and therefore I would either be picking between oolongs or post fermented teas and I think if you asked me to you forced me into the answer I would say post fermented yeah because <laughs> I just, knew you're gonna say that <laughs> that's 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 where we're at in terms of like my heart is you know I'm a real poor head and mm. oh another common question that we get asked is why don't we stock more poor and the answer to that question is, we want to be super picky with our pu'er. Um, and I, I'm not suggesting that other tea sellers are not choosy about their pu'er. We taste, I would estimate, um, definitely over 50, closer to 100 different pu'ers every season. So that's spring and autumn. Um, and we end up usually picking a handful, two, three of them. So we really are picky about that. Um, we have lots of different types of tea. We've got lots of oolongs, lots of greens, lots of, you know, lots of different types of tea. Mm. And we want you guys to know that when we stock a pua, it's going to be, you know, something that we absolutely adore. And we do have some puas coming again in a few weeks. She's currently designing the wrappers. Um, so you know how picky we are on those as well. So we're, we're working on the wrappers of those. I really um, hope you like it. <laughs> and um, yeah. They, Feeling they, the pressure. <laughs> but they are really some, some great pours coming. Uh, any other questions yeah. out there? Nico said he bought his first yixing pot a while ago. Is mm. there anything wrong if he brews different types of tea in it? And will it dull, uh, will it dull my brew tea at some point? Will it dull? Yeah. Okay, so the question of the yixing pots and whether or not you should stick to one type of tea in a yixing pot is a question that we get asked a lot. Um, my answer to that question is use your yixing pot. And if you um, brew one type of tea often enough, so you're, you're, you love pu'er teas or you love dark oolongs and you, you brew them a lot, then sure, stick to one type because it will have an effect. It will, um, you know, slowly over time start to season the pot. But what I think is a real shame is when people buy, uh, spend their money on a yixing pot and then they say, oh, it can only be used for a type of tea and they hardly ever use it and it's sitting on their shelf as this kind of prize. Really use your pot. And, you know, the, the, the majority of the benefits of yixing clay is the effect that it has in reducing astringency and making a smoother brew. And that is across the board, whichever teas you brew in it. So use it for its advantages. The seasoning side, only if you're really brewing a type of tea very, very often, I would suggest doing that. What's your opinion on Darjeeling teas? I love Darjeeling teas and I want to stock more Darjeeling teas. The problem with Darjeeling tea is that it's, um, it's a very saturated market um, and a lot of the big tea players, tea sellers buy up in advance in bulk. Um, and in order for me to get the super high quality stuff, which is, as you know, the, one, the stuff that I want to get, I have to really head into the subcontinent and start to make deals with people in a much more meaningful way. Because otherwise, if I'm going through the kind of standard routes, I'm never going to be able, well, I'll get the good stuff, but it'll come at a premium and I don't really want to do that. So the way that we try to source is try to do a bit of guerrilla sourcing and go through the back door and really try to, to make deals um, with the farmers or at least with the provincial wholesalers in that area before it gets bought up. But a lot of the Darjeeling is already mapped out and bought up in lots. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we currently don't stock Darjeeling, but we will be moving into that territory if we get a chance. But you know what? There's so many teas in Taiwan, China and Japan. It's insane. Mm. We, uh, you know, we, we, we stock loads, but we really are still scratching the surface in terms of the amount of variety out there. So there's so much more to explore in those areas anyway. Um, I like loosely said she wants to open a May leaf tea house in 
Connecticut. In Connecticut. Connecticut. So um, we would love other May Leaf <laughs> tea houses opening up all across the world. That would be amazing. Um, it's a, it obviously needs a lot of thinking through in terms of how that would work, in terms of some sort of franchise agreement. We're not there yet. We are still in the mode of building this um, uh, community, um, making sure that uh, the tea that we put out is the best quality that we can, um, and really working through all the different projects that we're doing at the moment. But that is on the horizon. It's something that we are looking to explore in the future, but not for a while. Uh, what else? I was thinking, should we get another tea? Can we drink another tea? Guys, it's uh, 10, we've done 70 minutes of this tea session. Whoa. I am quite happy to keep going a little bit longer if you guys want, and we can pull out another tea. But, you know, it's up to you. Let us know. How many people out there want us to pull out another tea? Do you have any other tea that you're thinking of? I'm, I'm thinking poor because everyone's going, I'm drinking this and I'm drinking that. We're like, damn, I want some of that. <laughs> but you know. Okay, why don't you go get some poor? All right, and which we'll, one? Um, oof, you choose. Let's do a bit of monocle boss. Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll drink some any, anyway, but, and uh, we'll see how, how long this session goes. Um, let's see, <laughs> 24 hour tea stream. Yeah, that might be a little bit difficult, guys. You know, I do need to actually get some sleep and I do need to work a little bit. Look, Mishkin's a. He's a bit touchy. He doesn't. He likes his mother, not not his dad. Look, look at him. He's like, where is she gone? Anyway, um, let's see. Sorry. Questions. Let me go through some more questions. Do you carry any teas you personally don't like, but because customers demand it? No. Um, and I think that that's you know that's a, a choice for tea sellers. That's not something that you know I would say is a right or wrong. Um, obviously, some tea, tea sellers are looking at what the consumer wants and is finding the tea for them. But in my opinion, you know, my job is a curator, um, and you know, my job is to to taste as many teas as I can and try to give you a selection of teas that I love. And if you don't like my taste and you don't like the teas that I like, then you're not going to like Mayleaf teas. Um, and um, you know, that's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. I personally think that in order for me to be passionate about what I do, I need to love everything I sell. I'm not saying that I'm not purchasing teas that are, um, I'm not saying that I will only purchase teas that are like top grade, pinnacle, high quality teas. Sometimes there are some everyday drinking green teas or everyday drinking black teas that I think are very good everyday drinking black teas and I like them and I, but the, the key is that I really need to enjoy the teas otherwise I won't purchase it and all of the um, all of the farmers out there who, who deal with us any of the suppliers who deal with us they know very very quickly that if they give me tea that they say is the same tea but is not tea that I like Mm -hmm. then it just won't get bought um, and um, you know that's one of those things that suppliers learn about us quite quickly is that we're very very picky about yeah. what we'll <clears> purchase <throat> and even if we've purchased from the same tea farmer year in year out for five years you know we always taste every batch and we always make sure it's it's good enough quality and if it's not then we don't buy it that <laughs> so somebody some of you getting tea drunk out there <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to a bit of Monocle Boss just to kind of get me a bit buzzed. We are, it's Saturday and it's uh, quarter past 7 p.m. So it's, it's coming up to, to the evening. Joshua, nice to see you, my friend. If there were a type of tea you would name Love Gun, what tea would it be? Oh, that's quite cool That name. is a very interesting question. Love Gun. Love Gun. Oh. I would go for, i tell you what I would go for. I would go for... You know the arrow shaped teas? No, what do you mean? You know the Angie Bai Cha shaped teas, the very straight teas. Oh. You know? Like a love green. gun. Yeah. I was green. thinking more like a black tea, like a, like a, I don't know, a woolly, fruitier one, you know? Okay. One of those, maybe like a. That's a random question, Joshua. Like, I, I like it. <laughs> I like it. it though. Love gun. Are you going to get me thinking about that? <laughs> um, I would go for a straight shaped green tea, 
like um, yeah, similar shape to an anti biochar. Maybe like um, a um, a Sichuan kind of um, lotus uh, orchid shaped tea, um, or maybe even a, a monkey picked. Oh, we've got some amazing monkey picked tea coming in. Oh yeah, amazing monkey picked tea. Get ready for that. All hand produced. It's it's a really 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 good one. Um, okay, so Monocle Boss. Yummy. You guys know this tea. If you don't, check out the video. Check out the reviews. This is one of our favorites. And Lovely. it's been a while, actually. It has been a while <sighs> since we've had the boss. Uh, Flora, the cat's name is Mishkin. Mishkin. Yeah. I wanted a kind of a Russian name for some weird reason. So the tea boat allows you to pour out like that. Cheers, Jake. Mm. Let's have a sniff of this. Well, let's focus on the Monocle Boss leaves. For those of you who don't know Monocle Boss, can you do a focus yeah. sign? Focus on. Booyaka. Oh, I love that tea so much. The boss. <laughs> the boss. Any warnings for Gongdao Bay choices? Oh, um, well, oh my God. It's changed. Yes. Oh, I'm spinning it on myself. That's what I was trying it with Lucy Whoa, a few days ago, and I was like, "That's that's different." Ooh, it's smoked up a little bit, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's got a little smoky edge to it. Um, um, oh. da -da -da. Any warnings for Gongdao Bay choices? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um, <laughs> capacity is obviously important. There's nothing more annoying than having a Gongdao Bay that's smaller than your teapot size because <laughs> you empty it and it just overflows. Capacity is important. Other than that, I would go for porcelain or glass because they're universal. I wouldn't really be that interested in, in clay Gongdao Bays and things like that. Um, in, the in, pour is very important, yeah, the, the spout pour. is really important, you want a nice clean pour, yeah. so I would test that out. Um, so yeah, that's... For, for example, like this one is a bit annoying, personally I find, because the liquid gets stuck there when you're pouring yeah. it and you have to go yeah. like... So this that. is a very classic shape Grand Bay, but we didn't purchase it for exactly that reason. When you get this kind of bulbous, kind of pregnant Grand Bay shape and you pour it like ah. this, it stays... Oh my god! It's all right, it's stronger. Um, it stays um, in this little belly and you have to really tip it, tip it, tip it. And that's not very good. So we like these, these edges. That makes it for a good pour. Yeah. Really, really, um, um, that's some, those are the kind of things we look for. We also do the same with our cups. You know, I like it to have a, a nice curve. That doesn't mean I have to strain my neck. We do sell those double walled um, glass ones that have more of that kind of beautiful round shape. And they're good, but they kind of, you know, they're a little bit frustrating because they leave a little bit of the liquor. I tend to prefer those kind of edges. Um, oh. I saw loads of questions pass by and I'm kind of um, losing some of them. Uh, what time of the year do you typically end up restocking? As I've noticed, a lot of teas have been out of stock, so I just read Scott, one. Scott, what time, what time of the year do we typically end up restocking? Well, I, you know, first of all, I agree. A lot of our teas are out of stock. Um, and as I said before, some of part of that reason is because we've left them there for people to add to their collection. But in probably about a week's time or two weeks time, we're going to be taking all of the ones that are not going to be coming back this year. And we're going to be hiding them from the website so that mm. it's a much more kind of clean and useful website. Remember, you can always, when you go to the uh, index page or the product list page of our website, there's a little filter where it says hide and you can click hide out of stock and it will hide all the out of stock items. So a little useful tip out there for you guys. If you don't know that, you can hide out of stock very, very quickly uh, or very, very easily. But usually we, we um, try to do one big spring order from all the different countries and one big autumn order. But, but realistically, in reality, we're ordering all the time. Um, so we're ordering, you know, at least six times a year. Um, but there'll be two big chunks. The spring orders and the autumn orders or winter orders will be the two big chunks. Oh, Jake uh, missed uh, how we tasted the teas. So he asked how it was. He's a Texan. Um, okay, recap on the Charleston teas. Um, so thank you again, Mac, for sending them. Yeah, man, thank you. It's a nice, nice way to start these May Leaf sessions um, to, to do this. And I should say, if any of you guys want to send us teas to do tastings of, 
We're open. We're always open to, to have teas sent to us. And they don't have to be teas that you love. You could send us teas that you think are a bit dodgy as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, not too dodgy, please. No, you know what? Oh, send it over. On. We can have some fun with some dodgy teas as well, I'm sure. Some really fishy pu'ers yeah. out there. So thank you, Mac, for sending us these uh, these mm -hmm. sample, mm -hmm. these teas from the Charleston uh, Tea Plantation, aka Bigelow Tea. My uh, impression of them is that they're all decent for the fact that they are machine picked and machine processed. They are not high quality in the sense of the old terroir, old world teas out there, but they are well made. The, the production method is well, is well done um, for what it is. And the green tea, I would say, has uh, is, is a nice, easy drinker, not astringent, surprisingly not astringent, mm -hmm. has kind of more kind of herbaceous notes um, and dried uh, grass notes. Mm -hmm. the, in, the Charleston breakfast tea is a classic breakfast blend. No criticism of it. If you like breakfast teas, then this will so perfectly suit you. You can combine it with uh, lemon or you can combine it with milk. Mm. And the first flush is definitely the richest of all of the teas, richer in terms of taste, slight kind of ruby menthol kind of notes towards the end, uh, but is again, kind of a bump up from the from the breakfast blend um, and has um, still got that kind of um, breakfast astringent, um, refreshing, quenching uh, taste profile, but it's got a little bit more richness to it. So that's the summary on those teas. Cool. Um, Jake, you're getting the Jade Star sweats. I feel you, my friend. I know that, I know that feeling very well. I hope it's <laughs> not too late where you are. I personally cannot drink Jade Star too late. It sends me off on one and I just uh, yeah. find it hard to come back from that. It's a bit intense. That's why I kind of stick to the Monaco Boss most of the time. Mm. Saying that though... Man, I love this too. The that like... works with me is like, he's so obsessed with Jade Star. <laughs> it's quite funny. Love yeah. It. You know, the first thing was super strong, but like how we steeped it, but it was super smooth, like so, not bitter. And the sweetness. It's changed, man. But the sweetness it's and the, the elderflower. Go on, give them a look at those mm. wet leaves. So it's We're not going to do a proper tasting on this because you've seen this. If you haven't seen it, then go watch the video about our Pasha Monocle Boss and you can uh, see us doing a tasting of it. Yeah, it's it's matured and it's really complex super good okay so i think uh, it's now one minute one hour 20 we'll do another 10 minutes yeah, yeah i think that that's good um, another 10 minutes for you guys out there um i missed a question from before joseph really likes bilal chun yeah what other teas should he try and yeah, so joseph good. joseph um wilcox you like bilo chen do you like May leaf bilo chen because bilo chen is one of those teas that you know there's different flavor profiles so it's kind of hard for me to say unless you um unless i know which kind of type you're doing will flying monk come back isn't oh, it is... amber gabba was uh <laughs> running out of stock uh, but i think it's come back it's come back hasn't it yeah so, so basically again, next week flying monk will be, be back in stock once um we get to blend it Basically, we just all hands on deck at the warehouse at the moment. Um, five hours stream, please. Oh. oh my God. How do you drink tea on airplanes? Very good question. Very good. Very good question. Go get that cold brew bottle. Yeah, oh my goodness. It's Can the you best. Get it? yeah. So what we do uh, to brew um, in the airplane is we get a cold brew bottle and we stuff it with a lot of leaf um, and then they can't stop you when you go through the... Um, the x-ray machines because there's no liquid in it and you then when you get past customs just get some bottled water fill it with bottled water and then you can cold brew your tea and you can be sipping it on the plane and you can always ask the stewardess um, to um, refill your That's tea just yesterday. like this so this is what we do when we're traveling on the plane the other option that you can do is bring some loose leaf with you in a tin and you can get one of those basket brewers, just carry it around with you, and then you just ask for some hot water. So either one of those. I know that there are these kind of uh, travel, um, glass oh, travel, yeah. um, uh, like thermoses. thermoses kind of things. I have tried a lot of them. I don't really like them very much because the leaf tends to sit in the water and stew. They tend to leak a little bit too much. I don't really like them. We are looking, and if we find anything nice, then we will be, um, 
buying it and uh, sourcing them. Any other questions? In it. Um, nim, nim, nim. Mm. Wow, this tea is so good. Do you want to say your initial impression of the tea kettle? Or do you want to keep that The tea kettle. Um, I would say um, it's definitely worth considering if, you, if you're looking for a kettle. I'm going to do a full review on it. Um, there are a few cons to it. There are a few things that I think need to be improved on it. But in general, it's up there as one of the better kettles out there, certainly for temperature control. Nisa. Nisa. Is that how I say it? Nisa. Nisa. Thanks, man. So thank you. Let's shout out a few people. Kurtan, Charles, Bernd Schmidt, Sherwin. We're up to 266. I mean, this is 266 people this drinking so tea cool. with us. This is crazy. We were talking yesterday, like what, what kind of figures were we hoping to get? And we both said anything around 50 or above and we would be happy. I but was like, 20 would be great. 266. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. It really, really is a pleasure. And we have plenty of plans for more tea sessions. We're gonna be doing lots of fun things, hopefully. This was really our trial run to see yeah. if we can get all the technical stuff working. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it seems to be doing um, uh, doing quite well. I don't if think we, we're yeah. having any problems. If there's any changes that you guys want us to do or think we could tweak, like let us know. Uh, would be you know it'd be great it'd be great to know yeah no totally through. let us know if there are any things that you would any ideas that you have for our live sessions anything you would like to do um, and we can make these really interactive you know that's the the key is to make these as interactive as possible um, that's why you need two people otherwise it's, <laughs> it's almost impossible um, what teas aren't coming back oh that's a that's a, a leading question. Um, at the moment, we are having trouble finding... Misty Peak. Yeah, Huang Shan Mao Feng, uh, yeah. Misty Peak, a.k.a. Um, uh, oh, sorry, Misty Peak. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, we're having trouble finding that. We're having some trouble with Oriental Beauty, uh, Eastern yeah. Beauty. Um, the samples that we're getting are no good. No good. Um, and, no good. you know, it's um, very worrying, actually, what's happening with Oriental Beauty. The prices are staying just as high, but the samples are nicht gut. Um, so we are, mm -hmm. we are hunting high and low for mm -hmm. this year's uh, Eastern Beauty. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head at the moment. Oh, Iron Monk. I, uh, I am Iron Monk is, is, is a struggle to find at the moment. Um, so, you know, it's a, we, yeah. but we keep looking. Don't worry, we'll keep looking. Juan, thank you for joining us. Jason, Mark, Neil, Yusuf. Lovely Thanks, to see you. Everyone wants to know how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And we got comments in the last video that my hair was graying. But, you know, I think, I think it was just the light um, out there. Um, so, uh, you can guess. Go on. I, I give you. I give you uh, three minutes to guess my age, and then I'll tell you. Oh no! This is gonna be so painful. Everyone's gonna be like, "Should we?" <laughs> Should don't worry. Don't age? worry about offending me. It's all right. You can say anything you'd like. You don't have to do the classic thing where you guess an age and then minus, minus. three years or five years to hopefully um, to hopefully not offend somebody. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. You're, you're, oh my god! The amount right. of times someone's asked me that. At work. And you know what? Okay, I'll tell you what. What? Oh, here they come. 88, 35. Da, 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 da. Oh, not bad, not bad. <laughs> One of you guys have got it right. 200. <laughs> <laughs> you are spot on. <laughs> uh, there you go. All right, so the answer, and two people have got it right. Somebody thinks I'm 420, but I'm wondering if they're thinking about other things when they do 420. So um, uh, the answer is 42. So those of you who said 42 and I saw a couple go by, you are right. I am 42 years young. Ta-da! Um, and um, any other questions? I'm 28. Not that it matters, but yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a spring chicken, this one. She's young, young, young. Ah, come on, we're all young. As long as it's, you know, in the head, you're good. So how are you guys doing? Are you enjoying your tea session? Anyone um, tea drunk yet? <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm hurrying up because I know all of you guys are already tea drunk. Let's go! <laughs> uh, all of you being very kind saying I look younger. Um, yeah. You know, it's just the lighting, that's all it is. You should see me in the morning. It's terrible. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, all right, guys. Mm. All right, so we'll answer a couple more questions and then we're going to be signing off. Yeah. Uh, so make them good. Yeah, I'm just going to Good man, you're one. high, right? <laughs> <laughs> Drunk on buy me dust. Okay, so for all the people out there that criticize um, our... Um, uh, criticize the fact that you can't get drunk on tea or you can't have this uh, psychoactive effect on tea. It's just simply a fact that tea is psychoactive. So all these people that are writing, it's just not possible. They're just trying to sell their tea or, you know, try by, by making it out Sorry. like it's a drug or something. No, it's just simple fact. Tea is psychoactive and the stronger you get different types of tea and it will have different effects and some people can feel a bit tipsy on tea. It's just simple. There's no, there's no, there's no argument or discussion <laughs> here about this. I'm not going to get involved in some debate about whether or not this is hype or not. This is just true. Go and look at how catechins uh, combine with your uh, endocannabinoid system. Go look at the reports. Go look at the studies. Go look at the fact that caffeine is the most widely used psychoactive drug in the world. And uh, hopefully we can put that to bed. I know I'm red. I don't know why. Maybe it's the heat from the light. Maybe it's because I'm really happy. It's Probably the that. It's the Monaco <laughs> boss. It's the Monaco boss. Maybe it's my Monaco <clears throat> boss. Uh, yeah, what yeah. young raw poor would you recommend for absolute poor beginners? Asked by David. Um, hmm. I would say it's it's you know it's very very difficult um, to kind of um, uh, make. Um, make generalizations like yeah. that. You know, some people, I find some teas really, really kind of advanced in the sense of quite um, hard to, uh, more kind of refined, like um, mm. like those smoky, peaty whiskies. You wouldn't say uh, yeah. that, you know, a whiskey uh, beginner should immediately necessarily go for a peaty whiskey. However, mm. some people may really love that profile. So I think it's very difficult to say. However, mm. we have our Young Gushu range. Yeah. And for those of you waiting for Young Gushu 2017, it is arriving on the boat next week. So it'll take another couple of weeks for it. We pack it and label it and get it out. Yeah. But Young Gushu 2017 is coming. And I would always say that that's a great starting point for mm -hmm. any beginner because it's sold loose. You don't have to buy a whole cake. And that's it's, you know, it's a, it, we try to pick that tea as a real kind of uh, universally loved yeah. pure tea. Yeah. So that's another one. Uh, Jacob, when will the Gong Fu Guru be back in stock? I answered that already. The B stock will be in stock in probably end of next week. That will be at a discounted rate. And then Gong Fu Guru Mark II will be with us probably in about a month and a half to two months. That's mm. the idea. All right, guys. <sighs> Me thinks you guys are not going away, are you? It's two, still 268 <laughs> viewers. All right. <laughs> You guys are awesome. Do you think you'll be able to get more of the Master Wu Chow Joe clay pots? They're coming in a week, a week and a half. Mm. Get ready. We only have 20 of those. 20. So get ready. Make sure you go to the website, click on the out of stock notification, and you will be sent an email when it comes back in. And it, as Yay. always, it's a first come, first serve out there. Love those pots. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to keep drinking Monocle Boss. Yeah. A great tea for a Saturday night. Um, wherever you are in the world, thank you so much for tuning in and for making this Mayleaf session something um, that has Super been really special for amazing. us. It's so nice for us to actually interact with yeah. you so much of the time. It's me sitting in front of a camera recording and then uploading and then doing comments. So I love this. Mm -hmm. I really love this interaction. I hope you do too. I hope that, you know, we kind of can build up this community and then we can have like a thousand people all sharing tea together. We've got lots of ideas for other live events coming up, but do let us know if you have any ideas for live events, mm -hmm. anything that you think we can do. We don't necessarily have to do it in our home. It's going to be a technical issue, but we could potentially take you out in London, maybe potentially, and Ooh. do them in other locations. So there's lots of things that we could potentially do. Yeah. We're only scratching the surface, but I hope that you enjoyed our first May Leaf session and I hope that you have a wonderful day or a wonderful night and you're drinking the best tea that you possibly can. So thank you. I guess 
It's That's time it. to say goodbye, <laughs> even though none of you are leaving. It's time to <laughs> say goodbye. Stay drunk, stay happy, have a great week. Jake, we will weekend. get Lucy, we will get Lucy. We're gonna rope her in to do a live session. Oh, Don't yeah. you worry about that. Don't yeah, you worry yeah. about that. Thank you, Flora. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Enzo. Thank, Thank you, you, Federico. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Giorgio. Thank you to all of you who have been here and shared this um, Saturday with us. Epic. We want to express our thanks to all of the tea heads out there. If you couldn't make it for this session and you're watching on, uh, on the recording, then try to make it for the next session. Try to be part of this worldwide tea head coming together to pull leaves and talk tea. Other than that, you know the score guys, keep <laughs> drinking the good stuff and spread the word. Let's make the next session a thousand people. Holy yeah? moly, I'm gonna find it hard to keep track. <laughs> but yes, let's do it. <laughs> so spread the word, keep drinking the good stuff, and we will see you at the next May Leaf session. See you later, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye.